Hi, I'm Kirby Allison, and we love helping the well-dressed take care of their wardrobes. Because of our close relationship with Tony Gaziano and Dean Gerling, we were offered exclusive access to bring our cameras inside the new Gaziano and Gerling factory to share with you how they make their renowned Goodyear welted shoes. The first new shoemaking factory to be opened in Northampton in over 100 years, the facility is quite simply amazing. Using a combination of the best shoemaking machines of the past, some being as much as 100 years old, a brilliant modern manufacturing process, and an incredible amount of handwork for a factory-made shoe, Gaziano is easily making some of the finest ready-to-wear shoes available ever made. I really enjoyed the opportunity to visit the factory. Tony takes us step-by-step step through the entire process they use to make their near bespoke quality shoes. I hope you enjoy learning about how Goodyear welted shoes are made as much as I did. This is called the clicking room, where the clicking is done. Uh, you can see here, I'm just rolling out a skin of um, black calf. It's the same quality of leather that most of the West End bespoke makers use, and we use for our own bespoke service. Uh, so pretty much all the leather that we use, including the black, uh, we use uh, is, is, is a bespoke leather. Uh, it's one of the things that, uh, you know, uh, when, we, when we created the brand that we really wanted to do, we wanted to bring a bespoke shoe to the market as a ready-made product. As you can see here, the, the skin itself, you can literally split down the middle. So there's a backbone that works from the bottom of the skin to the top of the skin, this being the neck and this being the butt of the animal. In actual fact, if I pick it up and fold it in half, you can see at this end is the neck with the front legs and this is the, this is the back legs. The best area is the, um, is the butt. The majority of the leather usage that we do is right down here in this area where it's the most flawless area of the skin and then we probably wouldn't go above this area of the, the skin. So, and then everything else ahead of that would be what you'd be using for the interior lining? We use for the interior, interior lining or we'd use for swatches or we would simply chuck away. So typically when you cut a leather, cut a shoe out, you would create an imaginary line of the backbone here and then you would put the cap against the backbone with the vamp and then you would get your quarters back here. And that is, you know, half a pair of shoes right there. And then for the other half, you would mirror that simply by coming this side of the backbone. And that literally would be your first pair of shoes out of that skin. So all the blades that we use in the clicking room, uh, we have to make ourselves by hand. The reason why we do that is because the blades that we make are, are sharper, they last longer and we get more definition in the cutting. So all the blades are made actually from a specific hacksaw blade uh, that we have to snap, put them into the knife handle and then we grind them down using a grinder. The reason why the clicking room is called the clicking room and the clicker a clicker is because this particular blade also makes a particular sound, a clicking sound. And many years ago, uh, when you had a room full of clickers uh, cutting leather out, that's all you would hear. Everything would, the room would be in complete silence and you would just hear this clicking sound. Hence the, the name clicker and clicking room. Okay, so this machine is called a Royal Perforator. Now what it does uh, is it actually puts in all of the perforation holes and uh, with a different uh, little bit that we use, it actually puts the, uh, the serrated edges on the edge of the leather as well. So this is where you would do any of the broguing? Yeah. That's and right, what yeah. about like a medallion? Is that done on this machine too? Uh, no, that's done on a completely separate machine. That's done on what we call a press. Okay. So it's a whole pressure in almost in one bump from a press mm -hmm. will knock all of the medallion holes out. Okay. So you can see actually, actually how it starts off. Uh, that's straight from the clicking room, the, the cut edge, and then it comes in and we do the serrated edge and then the perforated holes afterwards. And how is the spacing of this done? Uh, the spacing is created by the machine. So there's all these little gadgets on here, 
which alter the distance between. You can see actually there that that is the okay. same as that. So this kind of goes through. So in any one punch, it punches out three holes. And then the machine takes it. And That's right, yeah, yeah. And then we can have as much distance or as little distance between each set of punches as we like, depending on how we set the machine. So we're now in the closing room. Um, basically, this is where the girls stitch all the sections of the leather together. And we use quite old machines because uh, they're, they're the easiest to work with. Easy for the girls to kind of be able to move in, in the way that they want. We stitch these together in the same way as a bespoke shoe uh, would be stitched together. And then it's completely controlled and there's by the skill of the girls. So even though I guess it's a factory made shoe, I mean a lot of the processes are exactly the same as it would be done bespoke. Yes. Right? Exactly so even though right. it's done by machine, it's done by hand, individually, yeah. by machine. Yeah. I mean this, this process here is exactly the same as, uh, as a bespoke cover. Yeah. So, so far the clicking has been the same as bespoke. Yeah. Sewing, the closing has been the same as bespoke. Yeah. Using the same bespoke quality uppers. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you sure these aren't bespoke shoes? Well, almost. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, how would it be done, you know, at a lower quality, you know, shoe that's produced you know, kind of in greater volumes? Some of the bigger factories have automated stitching machines and it would be com almost zero operative skill. So they would place the leather in a template, mm -hmm. the machine would come down and do all the stitching. stitching. And so this allows you, I, I suppose, to have I guess more beautiful, kind of more complicated patterns. You know, I mean, one of the reasons that people buy this kind of product is is, is not just for the beauty of the shoes, but the expertise of uh, the people that are working on them. You know, it, it really does show human characteristics in, yeah. in kind of the making. Yeah. So where are we now in the process? So we're now in the lasting area. Uh, basically the process that this shoe has just been through uh, we've just drafted the upper around, so we pulled the toe in, we pulled the sides in, and put just a couple of nails in the side just to hold it in place. And you've got the, the insole in too, That's right? right, yeah, the insole's in there as well. So when you get to this point as well, you check the proportions of the upper. You have to make sure that this is the apron, that it sits right on the last, uh, that these points, the buckle is where it should be, and the back seam is straight down the centre of the back as well. Okay. Basically, once the drafting is done, uh, then we, we go over to this machine, which is called a pullover machine. Uh, now, the pullover machine actually drafts it a little bit tighter in there and puts these little pins in the side there. On here, you can see that there are five pincers, one at the toe, two at the side. Each one of these pincers grabs a section of the lasted leather and then drafts it over. So it's stretching the the upper, the interlining. Yep. I guess you put any stiffeners in here. That's right, we've got a toe puff in there as well. Okay. It's yep. stretching it over the last, and that's what gives this definition. This definition is actually created more by the next machine, which is called the bed laster. Okay. Uh, but what this does, it actually pulls all of the leather down to the last tightly, so that the shoe is exactly the same shape as the last. Okay. That's what really kind of determines the fit and the look of the shoe. So we're now at the third stage of lasting. Uh, this is called a bed laster. Uh, so basically this machine uh, lasts the toe in and creates the definition uh, around the toe area. It gives it a nice sharp feather edge. Normally this is done by putting the shoe in upside down. The plate wraps around and these plates kind of pull in and you can see that there, then we tie a wire around the edge of the shoe uh, to hold it in until the, the welt is sewn in. And, and that wire holds that definition in there? Yeah, holds it tight, okay. basically. Uh, once, the, once the weld is in, we take, the, we take the nails out, we take the wire out and it's released. But it really just kind of holds that shape in. I mean, this, this piece of machinery is pretty much an antique. Uh, I think it was originally built in the 1920s and we're one of only two factories that use it. Wow. Okay. So. Incredible. It's unbelievable how old some of these machines are. I mean, you know, yeah. even, even with uh, you know, factory-made shoes, the methods have still been around for 100 years. Yeah, well, like I said before, these, these were created 
as the first point of manufacturing after hand making stopped in factories. Um, so originally, say like 150 years ago, you would have had rooms of people lasting and sewing welts in, you know, hundreds of people to kind of get the production out. And then they introduced these machines and a machine like this was probably one of the first inventions after hand making stopped to kind of uh, mass produce footwear. Yeah, that kind of add industrialization. Yeah. Great, so then what would be next after this? Um, so next, um, I think we're going on to the welt sewing. So we're at the welt machine now. Yep. And so this is Goodyear welting, yes. which is you know, really you know, the whole entire point of a, of a well-made shoe is the Goodyear welt, and that's what allows the shoe to be resold. Yep, that's what the whole of this type of construction is named after. It's, it's basically a welt, uh, which is uh, a thin strip of leather, uh, which is attached uh, to the shoe all the way around from heel breast all the way around to heel breast. It's attached using what we call a lock stitch, uh, which basically means if one stitch doesn't comes undone, the other one, uh, the, all the rest of the stitches hold. And so the welt stitches the welt yep. through the upper, the inner lining, yep. and the insole. That's right, yeah. So all four pieces of those well, together. Well, not, not the insole. So the difference, say, between this and a Blake stitch is that uh, the Blake would have no welt, uh, the sole would be glued to the shoe, mm -hmm. and the stitch would go all the way through the sole and the insole. Okay. So basically, if you're walking in the rain with a Blake shoe, mm -hmm. the chances are you're going to get your feet wet. With a, with a welt, the, the weld is stitched to the upper and the rib, which is attached to the insole. Okay. And then the, the, the sole is glued on and uh, the sole is stitched then to the welt rather than the shoe. Okay, so the rib is this piece of That's right, yeah. material right here. Yeah. Whereas with the bespoke shoe, the hand welting would go through the insole? Uh, it would go through the insole, but you, create, uh, you still create a rib on that insole. It's a wider, flatter rib. Uh, and but that's what's kind of cut out? Yeah, it's what you, you carve out with, yeah. the, with a knife. So then after this is done, you've got the weld, you trim it, yep. and then you, you cork it? Yep, so after this stage we would then put the, uh, the wooden shank in. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd also put a fiddle in there to give okay. a nice fiddle shape. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and then we would fill this void with cork. Uh, basically what the, the rib does that the weld stitched onto is it leads a little bit of a void of mm -hmm. around about three millimeters between the sole and the insole of the shoe. So in that void we put a, a wooden shank in there and a fiddle to kind of give the shape and the support that you need. And then we fill the whole void with cork. Uh, so that's about three millimeters of cork all the way through. Okay. Uh, the advantage of cork is, is that uh, when you start wearing the shoe, the insole softens up and it beds down into the cork and it creates a, a very comfortable footbed. And then what happens after this process? Did you, you put the outsole on? Yeah, so now after this process, we, you know, we basically glue all this up. We wet the soles, which is the oak bark mm. soles, and uh, we, we glue both of them up and attach them together. So next we're at the sole stitching machine. That's right, yeah. Right, so this has been filled with cork and you channel the sole, or I guess you glue the sole on, then you channel it, yep. and then it's stitched. That's right. Yeah. Right. So what do you mean by channeled is actually we slice a millimeter thick, about 10 millimeter wide piece of leather, open it up, and then we stitch it uh, on the sole stitcher, and then we close the channel down so that the stitch is hidden on the bottom of the shoe. And that's what allows a shoe, I mean, along with the welt, you know, to be resold. Yes, yeah. the weld is the main part that allows you to resole it many times. Okay. The covering of the stitching is mostly aesthetic, to be yeah. honest. So whenever you look on a, a shoe, you know, the stitching you see right here isn't attaching the weld to the upper, but that is that's, attaching the sole to the weld. That's correct, yeah. yeah. So now we're at heel attaching. It's a little bit more complicated than it sounds. So you can see every single one of these sections and lifts of piece of oak bark leather. Uh, we actually stack all those individually um, on our own by gluing them all together and eventually putting a top piece on. Then uh, we hammer brass nails in, cut the heads off and then scour it all down to yeah. a nice uh, pitched heel. Whereas 
typical manufacturing, yeah. you would kind of get a heel block. Yeah. And what do you use brass nails for? Any particular reason? Yeah, Is well, that aesthetic or it's it's a little bit aesthetic, but it's also because um, they wear at the same speed as as leather. So you know, if you use steel, for example. Uh, which would protrude through wear, then you would get a lot more slippage. Okay. You know, you guys are constructing your own heels here, which is part of what allows such a beautiful kind of silhouetted heel. Yeah. How does that differ from other ready-to-wear shoes that, you know, I feel like the, the heel is really a place where you can see the quality of a, you know, of a really high-end ready-to-wear shoe versus something that's just mid-range. Yeah. Is the elegance and... Well, it's probably the way that it's made. I mean, typically in, in, in a normal factory, uh, a manufacturer would buy a whole heel block in and attach it all in one go. And then you have a limited control over the way you want the heel to look. Mm -hmm. You know, with our heels, like we're laying every se uh, separate section uh, individually, mm -hmm. um, and then we're scouring it all down. So when you get the finished product, you actually see all the different layers uh, of leather and all the characteristics that that leather has. Um, Great, so now at this point, I mean, the shoe is really almost all done. I mean, I guess what's left in the finishing process at this point? So in the finishing process, I mean, from this stage, the edges would be trimmed and tidied up. Mm -hmm. um, they would then be stained, uh, they would be waxed and ironed. Uh, which is again is another process which is exactly the same as what you would uh, have in a, in a bespoke shoe. Uh, everything's hand ironed, you get a nice sheen, compress all the fibres of the leather together um, and, and it comes out a nice crisp sharp finish. After that the, the, the sole bottom would then be uh, all sanded down, completely down to the level below this which is like this area and we would then start to stain the bottom of the sole. Yeah, and you guys spend an incredible amount of time finishing the soles also with, you know, kind of your waist, your black waist, depending yeah. on the color of the shoe. And then you even stain and polish the forefront also, also right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and again, a lot of it's, you know, you'll see with the, what we call the V-waist that we do, uh, there's no templates, there's no markings on the leather, it's all done by uh, the craftsman by hand. Um, and you know when we when we put the combination of um, stains on the fore part and the waxes, it has to be kind of uh, again all sponged on by hand, and um, you know it really kind of gives the depth of of the leather yeah. when it's finished. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. You know, inside and underneath is the outside of the shoe is. Yeah, it is. So here we are at the patina station. This is where the area where we, we, we basically hand paint shoes to the customer's order. Basically the way we do that is we make uh, the, all of the shoes in a crust leather. Uh, it's a leather that's, that's drum dyed with a little bit of wax on top, but that's all that's been done to it. What that, what that allows us to do, it allows us to put inks and stains into the leather uh, and the leather can absorb it so that we can build up uh, a nice, beautiful color finish. Yeah, yeah. And this finish. is another characteristic that you guys really brought to Ready to Wear was this level of kind of hand, hand work or kind of hand involvement in the finish of the shoe. Yeah. Uh, really just as much during the construction and certainly even more rare. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're, I mean, fortunately, you know, we're small enough to be able to kind of add these little delicacies and. Um, you know, we were the first, certainly the first English company to kind of add this uh, patina service. We, we take orders from all over the world from people, you know, that, that want whatever colours they want. Yeah. Um, How many different patinas do you have, standard ones? Well, we have standard ones, we have about 20, but okay. then we have, you know, customers are allowed to kind of make up their own combinations of colours. You know, if they want us to use three colours to make an individual patina colour, then we can, yeah, we, we really good. can bespoke it for them. And we've done uh, shoes with rabbits on the soles yeah. and patinas. We've, we've, we've done all kinds of crazy, crazy things, stuff, yeah. yeah. Uh, but the best ones are the, uh, you know, are basically the, the more yeah. subtle ones like yeah, this. Absolutely. I mean, this still has yet to be polished, but it started life as this colour. Mm -hmm. um, and then we put a base colour on, which is like a, which is like a pink colour. Uh, it's actually that colour there. Like a burgundy. Yeah, like so the then that's, that's kind of basically put on uniform all over the shoe. 
and this is where the, the, the skill comes in. They then use a darker version of the burgundy um, to kind of basically um, shade in the different shading areas. So then you get this light and dark kind of uh, effect through the shoe. And the, the real skill with patina is to make that effect seamless. So, so one colour blends into the mm -hmm. other without any harsh lines. Yeah. So once, once the patina base is set, then uh, we can start to spit and polish it. Mm -hmm. uh, every pair of shoes that comes through the factory, unless it's suede, <laughs> is balled up by hand, um, the traditional way, and, and, and pretty much ends up like that. Yeah, wow, that's gorgeous. Wow, incredible. So then this shoe would be ready to be boxed up and, yep, and sent shoes. off to a happy, happy client. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that shoe is ready to go. We've got the, the inner sock in there, all of the sole, edges, everything is finished. It's nicely polished up. Um, we'll be ready to go in the box and go. Great. Well, Tony, right. hey, thank you so much for having us at the factory. Yeah, this that's all right. This has been an it's absolute been, pleasure. It has, real pleasure. You know, there's been so much more to the process than I think even I expected. And, yeah. you know, really I was struck by, you know, just how much handwork is going into the shoes, and although it's a machine welted, kind of Goodyear welted shoe, that really is quite close to the bespoke process. It is, and yeah. it's, you know, when you, when you start to wear it and you experience it over a period of time, you feel the difference with the leathers, the, the, the components inside the shoes, the soles. Mm -hmm. It gives you support where you need it, lets you, let your feet flex where they need to, and they wear the same as a, as a bespoke shoe, so it's, um, you know, it's a great product. Yeah. Well, keep up the great work. We really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, we'll do our part to, right. you know, help your customers and keep these shoes looking great. Yeah, no, I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you Thanks very much. Yeah, All cheers. Right. Take care.